Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> Wes Truth, and I am back this week with another episode. Well, what's going down at the Disney parks this week? You're about to find out, because there's a lot going down at Disneyland and also Walt Disney World, and we're taking a look at both coasts this week, that's right. And, uh... I think we're going to start that right about now. Let's hit it. <laughs> Halloween has returned to the Disneyland Resort this week with a few new awesomely wicked additions, as well as some old spooky favorites. The return of the tribute to the Day of the Dead, the return of Space Mountain Ghost Galaxy, and the Haunted Mansion receiving its annual Nightmare Before Christmas makeover to Haunted Mansion Holiday. There's also a lot going on across the way at Disney's California Adventure as well, because over at Cars Land, they're celebrating Halloween. Disneyland Resort has introduced the very first Halloween themed overlay to Cars Land, complete with hundreds of cars appropriate creepy decorations, trick-or-treat costumes for all your favorite characters, including Lightning McQueen and Mater, and even a terrifying zombie car wrapped around a tree, which even comes to life every few minutes with incredibly eerie sounds and lighting. Even two of the rides in Cars Land are getting into the Halloween spirit, with Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters transforming into Luigi's Honkin' Halloween, and Mater's Junkyard Jamboree turning into Mater's Graveyard Jamboree. And new music has even been recorded for the attractions, featuring the original voiceover actors for both of the characters. And at Radiator Springs Racers, the giant rock formations of Ornament Valley are now lit in a supernatural green and purple glow. The overall effect of Halloween convincingly immerses Cars fans in what Halloween would feel like in the fictional town of Radiator Springs. There's even a special version of the new Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout attraction. Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark takes place immediately after the story of the usual ride. The Guardians have broken out of the Collector's Fortress, thanks to Rocket Raccoon, of course, but unfortunately, they forgot Baby Groot. So Rocket must hack back into the Collector's Tour system, and he needs your help. <laughs> the one thing he isn't quite prepared for, however, is that all of the living exhibits are now running loose. The normal version of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout runs throughout daylight hours during the Halloween season, followed by Monsters After Dark, After Dusk, and throughout the evening until the park closes. Even at the popular downtown Disney District shopping area, the outdoor mall has been transformed with autumn atmosphere and pumpkins galore. That's right. Halloween time is always fun at the Disney parks, so if you're headed to Disneyland um, until Halloween, definitely look out for all that fun. Also included Mickey's Halloween party over at Disneyland. It's a lot of fun, so make sure you check all that goodness out. Now, hopping on a plane back over to Walt Disney World, because while we pretty much know a lot about Toy Story Land so far, which will open at Disney's Hollywood Studios next summer, Disney has opened a new exhibit related to the new land inside the newly renamed Walt Disney Presents building, which of course was one man's dream. This exhibit features a scale model of the new land, as well as detailed miniatures of ride vehicles from the Alien Swirling Saucers and the Slinky Dog Roller Coaster. The new model will be housed in the new area until the land opens next year, so if you're interested, be sure to stop by and check it out. Alright, also, at over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and also in the Walt Disney Presents building, beginning on November 3rd, Disney's Hollywood Studios will play host to a preview for Pixar's latest film, Coco, inside the theater in the new Walt Disney Presents attraction. 
In addition to the special sneak peek, guests will also be able to view character sculptures and artwork from the production that will be on display inside the reimagined space. So if you're a fan of Coco, you want to see a little sneaky peeky, <laughs> then make sure you check it out over at the Walt Disney Presents Attraction. And you can check out the model of Toy Story Land as well. Also at Disney's Hollywood Studios, beginning in November, for the first time in forever. Wait, I gotta go back. For the first time in forever. <laughs> a Frozen sing-along celebration at the Hyperion Theater will be getting a new addition as Anna, Elsa, and Kristoff welcome the fan-favorite character to some, <laughs> Olaf, to the popular show. In addition, all new songs from the new animated short that's going to play in front of Coco this November, Olaf's Frozen Adventure, will also be added to the show for the holiday season. If you're still a fan of Frozen, <laughs> you can check out the first time in forever sing-along celebration, the new holiday version, uh, this holiday, obviously. All right, beginning in November. And effective this week, we're hopping over to Disney's Animal Kingdom because the Satuli Canteen inside of Pandora, the world of Avatar, will no longer be serving breakfast daily. Boo! <laughs> With this dining... We, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead and boo them. Go ahead. I'll give, leave you a little space. There you go. You got it out. All right. With this Disney establishment now opening at 10 a.m. daily for lunch service. Although 10 a.m. for lunch is kind of early. Whatever. Uh, breakfast is now only available at Disney's Animal Kingdom at Restaurantosaurus. So I've eaten there quite a few times. Um, that's a sort of surprising. All the restaurants they have a D.A.K. You think more than one would be serving breakfast. However... If you want to get breakfast at Animal Kingdom, you got to go to Restaurantosaurus or not eat breakfast. <laughs> Just know, uh, no more breakfast at Pandora. And uh, we're going to hop over to Magic Kingdom because though Disney's After Hours was offered earlier this year until March, the After Hours event disappeared before spring break. However, it looks like the event will return to the Magic Kingdom early next year on January 19th the 26th and 30th, February 8th and 15th, and March 1st and 8th. So there's some planning ahead of time and only a few days of each month. And in some good news, Disney will be keeping the lower price point for the event that they tried out earlier this year. $119 plus tax for ages 3 and above, $30 less than the original price point in 2016, and $89 per guest for annual pass holders. So if you want to get in the Magic Kingdom uh, after hours and you want to spend that, uh, then there you go. And finally, though Walt Disney World's four main theme parks reopened this past Tuesday, there was extensive damage to Typhoon Lagoon, which caused the park to be closed until this past Friday on September 15th. However, the park reopened on September 16th, 2017, and will be operating on a normal schedule from now on. Effects from the storm continued to be felt around the resort with Fort Wilderness and even the Jungle Cruise attraction still closed until further notice. So make sure uh, if you want to check out Typhoon Lagoon, it is reopened so you can catch some waves, man. All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back with another episode very soon, as well as another Hitchhiking Host Show 101 where we'll talk about the history of a certain Disney attraction. But until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hitcho Show. Like you on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hitcho Show. Follow on the Twitter at Hitcho Show. And if you want to listen to the show or you are listening to the show, do so over on Podbean, HitchoShow.Podbean.com. Or listen over on Stitcher or iTunes by searching under West Troop or the Hitchhiking Host Show. Until next time, don't forget to... Hurry back. Hurry back. For the next episode. See ya.